when have you ever given yourself credit or made an assumption on somebody straight away without realizing, you know what, I probably shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I think when you think about all the different sensations we have in the league, I think Alex Caruso holds such a unique space in the NBA. And if you follow surprise packages, you don't need to look any further than this guy because fundamentally, he doesn't look like an NBA player. If we're being honest, a 25-year-old white guy who's balding is a rare phenomenon in the NBA. And if Caruso showed up to your local open gym and you weren't aware who he was, I'm telling you now, would you pick him first? That's what I'm going to ask you. But that's what makes him so special. And that's why we belong to Grub AC. So in this context, I want everybody to enjoy this feature because you should never judge a book by its cover. He's a man of many memes, a man of many names. AC, the bold member, the accountant, whatever you want to call him, Alex Caruso has become a favourite amongst both Laker and non-Laker fans around the NBA. With Avery Bradley out for the playoffs, a lot of responsibility has fallen upon the shoulders of the Caruso, and he has stepped up to the challenge. During the first round series against Portland, he had to guard guys like Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum, but AC still managed to have the best defensive rating of every player on the Lakers roster. Not one team picked him in the 2016 NBA draft, so this is the story behind the man, the myth, and the legend that is Alex Caruso. Although he wasn't picked in a draft, he put together a solid college career at Texas A&M, finishing as the school's all-time leader in assists and steals. Following in the footsteps of A&M alumni Chris Middleton, Caruso hit the G League, or the Development League as it was previously called, as a member of the OKC Blue. He was part of the side that went to the conference finals and showed real flashes of potential. Following the season, he got a spot on the Lakers' 2017 Summer League roster and even started a game in place of Lonzo Ball on the way to LA lifting the Summer League title. As luck would have it, in 2017, the NBA introduced two-way contracts which allow teams to sign up to two players that they can call up from their G League affiliate teams for no more than 45 days out of the season. Caruso became the first ever player to go directly from the G League to the NBA on a two-way contract. He was balling out for the Lakers G League team, averaging 19 points a night and earned call-ups for 37 games in the NBA. After another successful showing in the 2018 Summer League, he was rewarded with another two-way contract from the Lakers and earned that call-up yet again. That season, he went on to set a career-high 32 points in a win against the Clippers and became the only Laker other than LeBron James to record 30-plus points, 10-plus rebounds and 5-plus assists in a single game. In July 2019, after the Lakers had traded for Anthony Davis, they were looking to fill out the roster with guys that could play defense and hit threes, so destiny struck once again as Caruso signed a two-year contract with the Lakers worth $5.5 million. He secured the bag and secured substantial minutes on the court and has shown even more growth in his game ever since. If the Lakers want to lift the Larry OB this season, AC is going to play a crucial role in defending the other team's guards and scoring when he's open on offense. He's more than a meme now. Alex Caruso is a certified baller. Certified baller he is, yeah? So I'm actually going to take a quote from his Twitter page, yeah? Never stress about things that's not in your control. Yeah, and I've watched his journey over the last two years and that has been astronomical. So BJ, I go to you now. Should he be stressing just a little bit because he has to play a critical role in terms of how the Lakers are going to be successful in this postseason. Can he handle the moment? Well, you know what? We're going to find out and give this young man credit for the route that he has taken and the road he has taken to get to where he's at. This hasn't been an easy thing for Alex Caruso or for any player that's had to go the route that he's had to go through. However, you know what? With that comes the expectations of not only playing for the Lakers, but this is a team here where it's a championship or bust. They're expected to win the championship. They're expected to win this year, especially with the star players that they have, and they're going to need key contributions from their role players. So the formula for this league is the following. You know, star players have to be great and role players have to play their role great. Right now, Alex Caruso and company, they're trying to figure out what they have to do to complement these star players. It's a work in progress. But you know what? You know what? I have to salute him for everything that he's done because, uh, you know, he gets a lot of attention. But give him credit. When he's out there on the floor, he competes and he tries to compete at the highest level. Oh, if you're looking at the dominance of the guard player and the wing player, especially in the Western Conference, looking at those rivals, people are kind of underestimating the impact that Caruso is actually going to have if the Lakers are going to be successful this year. We've alluded to it already earlier in the show, but the Lakers need him to be on top form if they want to win a championship this year, surely. When you talk about a championship team, it's about everyone doing their part. 
you know, role, from, from the superstars, coaches, all the way down to the, to the role players, um, uh, even to the people in the treatment office, making sure the guys are ready to play the games. Uh, and I think Caruso is someone who loves to compete. He competes every single time he's out there on the floor. Um, and he just gives it his best, really. Uh, I don't feel like if the Lakers don't win, that the pressure's going to fall on him anyway. I think he's in a bit of a win-win, to be fair, because, you know, he's sort of a... He's this character that seems to have come out of nowhere. Um, and he's he's he seems to be overachieving in a lot of people's eyes. And for him, I feel like it could be better if guys continue to uh, underestimate him and he flies under the radar because he's definitely, you know, become become a big piece for that team. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I got faith in the Caruso. I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> I like that. Mo, Mo, BJ alluded to something earlier in the show, which I thought was really, really important and really, really prominent when you talk about Caruso now. And that's the increased pressure on him because of Avery Bradley's absence. Do you believe he's capable of being their elite perimeter defender in this team? I think, you know, he's on a roster where he's surrounded by experienced veterans that, you know, he can he can talk to about because they've been in a situation. And I, I agree with Ovi on this one. The pressure's really not on Caruso. No one's looking at the difference between the Lakers winning and losing on being on Alex Caruso. If the Lakers don't win this year, the criticism will fall upon LeBron James because, you know, that's just how the media narratives run with these things. For, for Alex Caruso, the way I see it is this. Do you guys remember the final series where the San Antonio Spurs and Danny Green, who is now on the Lakers as Alex Caruso see it, he really had his breakout series with the Spurs in that finals where he was popping off all those three-pointers because he found himself open while the other team's defense was focused on the stars. So now we've just been talking about the Lakers. We've been talking about how LeBron needs to go out and score 30 plus. AD's going to give you 30 plus if he does what he's doing. You've got Rondo pulling the strings and orchestrating everyone. And Alex Caruso simply needs to do only two things. He needs to play defense and needs to hit open shots. That's all he's got to do. He hasn't got all the pressure of what LeBron has to worry about and what Rondo has to worry about and what Anthony Davis has to worry about. He's on a team. He's a role player. He's got a simple role to fill. And I'm more than confident that he can do both of those things. Because if you actually watch him, rather than just watching the memes and laughing, if you actually watch his game tape, he's a very solid defender on the perimeter. And he's a very reliable three-point shooter if you leave him open. So I've got faith in the kid. And I feel like, you know, this this bubble saying, he hasn't got rival fans screaming at him, getting in his ear. This bubble saying even helps him even more to come out and, and hit those shots when the Lakers need him to. 